Assalamu alaikum and welcome to today's Sufi teachings. This Sufi teaching series we call Community Connection occurs on the first Sunday of every month at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. It is organized and underwritten by Sufi Center of Minnesota with the intention of making the Sufi teachings of peace, love, mercy, justice, freedom, and beauty available to people everywhere. We acknowledge that the land Sufi Center is located on is the traditional and, and ancestral homeland of the Dakota and Midwakadan tribes. Sufi Center Minnesota recognizes and respects the enduring relationship that exists between many indigenous peoples and their traditional homelands. We are excited and grateful to have Amani Shalabi with us today. Amani Shalabi is the founder of Universal Chaplaincy, a certified clinical chaplain with Advent Health and a member of the Association of Muslim Chaplains. She has 18 years of experience providing Sufi education and spiritual care for Shadliya communities across the world. She is a faculty member at the University of Sufism and is currently serving as a chaplain and gender equity coordinator for the Muslim Women's Organization. Imani lives in Florida and is a mother of a son and two daughters. Today's teaching is a taste of an upcoming workshop Amani will be offering at Sufi Center, Minnesota, October 19th and 20th, 2024. This workshop will be, will, will be both live for those in Minnesota or close to Minnesota who can attend at Sufi Center, as well as on Zoom for those who live elsewhere. You can find the link for additional information and registration in the chat, and I will put it in the show notes below this video. Uh, her teaching today is Walking in Allah's Light. Amani, welcome, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Abdullah. I am excited to be with all of you in Minnesota, inshallah, soon. And I want to welcome everyone in this class. And we start, as usual, by tuning our hearts with the recitation of Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter of the Quran, and by doing some uh, remembrance of Allah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Arrahmanir rahim. Malik yawm al-deen Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim Walad-dallim Subhanallahi walhamdulillahi wa la ilaha illallahi wallahu akbar wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi وهو العلي العظيم صلى الله على محمد يا ربي صلي عليه وسلم والله send your peace and blessing upon all the prophets and messengers and the holy souls the great saints who came to guide us and send your peace and blessing upon all of their families and followers until the day of resurrection and send your peace and blessing upon every heart in this class and upon all 
the families and the friends and the neighbors and send your peace and blessing upon every heart that is suffering on earth right now. Ameen, ameen. Subhanaka rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. So I will just share uh, the screen, my PowerPoint presentation. So do I have like an hour? Or an hour and a half? It's an hour and many. It's an hour, okay. Keeping that in mind. So, inshallah, we'll talk about how can we understand the divine qualities and reflect deeply on these qualities to become the servants and the representatives of these qualities on our daily lives. So I chose for today uh, some of the names, such as the name Al-Muqaddim, which means the one who advances. How can we walk in the light of Al-Muqaddim and learn the art of pioneering and being ahead of time? Because Al-Muqaddim means the one who advances things or see things ahead of time and initiate things that are necessary. So if we look at the natural world, how can we witness Al-Muqaddim in the natural world, for example? We see that Allah put in the seed a program that can advance it to become a full flower or herb or tree so this is something inner we can't see the programming and uh, also the necessary factors that aids the seed to become a particular herb or a particular tree. So there is the soil, even the worms in the soil, the water, the sun, and all of that play a role of advancing it. So that is one way to look at the uh, at how can we witness the name Al-Muqaddam in the natural world. Also, if we look in the Quran, the Holy Quran, Allah makes an oath by the location of the stars. If you think about it, if every star was not in its particular location, the earth might not be created, you know, might not have been created. Like every star is in a particular location that serves the earth to form and it serves us to have life here on earth. So if, if every star is not in its particular orbit and the location, we would not have been here. So Allah in advance, he created everything to sustain life and the life of, of the human being whom Allah created in order to get to know him and also serve his purpose. As we know Allah, we become his representative and servants on earth. And we advance the life on earth. We help life to evolve in earth, humanity to evolve on earth. So we see also all the prophets and messengers who came. They talked about the prophecies that we see happening in today life. I always give an example with a strange prophecy that Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said more than how many years ago, 1400 years ago, he said there will come a time where the person can talk to his shoes lace. And when I used to read that hadith, I used to doubt it, to say, how come that is not possible? It seems so weird. It's unrealistic. Someone probably wrote that hadith. 
But then I saw an advertising with Google that made a, a shoes that has a shoelace with a tiny electronic device uh, that you can talk to it. You can say, what is the weather will be outside today? Or what is the news today? Or something like that. And it would tell you. Now you can implement these devices in anything, really, and you can talk to anything. And so, subhanAllah, the prophecy came true. There is actually all the minor prophecies of Prophet Muhammad came true. And also, the prophets informed us about what happens after this eschatology. So that's in the way Allah designed everything in advance. And we're heading towards that prof prophecy to become true, for the words of Allah to become true. We sometimes get glimpses of that, each of us, according to our own readiness to receive from Allah and to connect deeply to Allah, so we can all have inspirations or visions or envision, or in, envision something to invent, something to do that may be of service to humanity at our times. And each one, actually, each one of us is required to do that in our own little or big ways, each according to what Allah is asking of you, each according to your capacity, like, uh, even if you envision something for your own family or get an inspiration of how to serve your own children, that could be a great uh, inspiration from Allah that serves also humanity because of the ripple effect. If you follow inspiration and guidance to do uh, small acts of kindness to people, that will be paid forward because people will feel well, and so they will act well with others and so forth. So nothing tiny or big go to waste. Allah inspires us to help us and to help advance humanity again to know ourselves so we can know him. We know the reality of life and the nature of the human being. Examples of from the Prophet's time, the story that we all know of Prophet Joseph or Yusuf والسلام, in Arabic, uh, how through dreams, through true visions that Allah gifted him with, he was able to know that there was there, there will would be a famine that happens in Egypt and around the area. And how in his wisdom, as he received the knowledge from Allah, he came with a plan to restore the wheat and to use only what is necessary and not to waste anything and to plant more and to restore for seven years until the famine comes. Egypt would be ready not only to feed itself, but to feed the world around it. I actually heard that one church is doing something similar, the Mormon church. I was invited for an interface event. They are actually storing, planting and storing food for difficult times. And after they satisfy their own community, they would be able to help others. We're all required to do that. I remember most of the Sufi teachers will tell you to or encourage you to have that uh, sus sustainability. Like if you have a backyard, CG would always tell you, plant it. Not only you will be able to feed yourself, you will be able to feed for other families at least. So uh, this uh, vision and the inspiration and knowledge that you may receive can help serve to heal and serve the wellness of everyone around you. 
and we all can have access to that because if you remember the story of Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam, he wasn't the one who saw the dream. It was, you know, the king of Egypt or the ruler of Egypt who asked for an interpretation and the people who were in the prison with Prophet Yusuf said, we know a wise person who may be able to interpret it. So the knowledge comes to everyone, it's accessible. And you see, if we integrate, like it, it, like it didn't come all of it to Prophet Yusuf, everyone played a role. The king saw a dream. He played a role to ask for an interpretation. Then the people around him played a role by, say, by saying, we can't really interpret it. And the one person who was in the prison was Prophet Yusuf played a role to inform them of a wise guide. And, the, and so everyone played a role. Then there is the farmers who played a role. Then there are the people who learned how to store it and the, who build the storages. So everyone can integrate the piece of knowledge they receive, the piece of inspiration, the skills that they are gifted with for the wellness of the whole community. So the more we integrate like that in unity, the more we will be able to serve ourselves and everyone around us and, and our society, our nation, and then the world. But unfortunately, we many not doing that right now. Everyone says I and mine and us and them, and all of that is creating chaos in the world and suffering, right? So that is one example. Another example of uh, a vision or pioneering that uh, Prophet Muhammad actually alayhi salatu wasalam, did was the charter of Medina or the constitution of Medina, which he lay out the first initiative for social polaristic system. Uh, he wrote this uh, charter or constitution to allow diversity to flourish and again integrate and support one another by giving the guidance. So first, that we all live in unity and we all are required to participate in mutual defense and protection. And uh, we all are entitled to religious freedom. And uh, we all need to uh, follow the rule of law to establish and restore justice to the community. And we all should share responsibility and cooperation. And treason, treason is prohibited. And one should be accountable for before the law. So if you actually study the history to see what was at the time, there was the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, the uh, the Indians, the Chinese, the Byzantines, they were all, if you really know history, it, they were all just uh, evolving laws to serve their own kind, but not having that polaristic approach, which Prophet Muhammad, a charter of Medina, served. So in that way, he was a pioneer in his way. All the prophets, alayhim salatu wasalam, were reformers and pioneers in setting foundations to help humanity to evolve uh, for the wellness of humanity and the creation and the animals and the plants and everything in the creation. So we need to also learn from them to be pioneers to be uh, or to learn what to advance, to learn what to initiate, to learn to be ahead of our time, to learn how to access inspirations and visions to solve not only our own personal problems, but the problems 
in our families or society or nation or the world. So that is how it's supposed to be. So for today, after each name that I'm gonna talk about and see if you have any question about what I said, we will do a little bit of practice. We will invoke the name uh, rhythmically and slowly uh, and try to drop deep into our hearts to connect to this divine quality, to connect to Allah through these divine qualities, asking Allah's help. You, you probably may have a certain situation you're dealing with. It could be your own organization or your own work or your own family or your own society or something that is happening in the world that you're passionate about and you want to uh, advance a cause, to serve a cause. You want to... Uh, evolve some skills or receive some inspirations from Allah to guide you to serve that cause, to serve that purpose. If you rely only on what you acquired and the knowledge and the experience you, you got, even though it is very valuable, you still need that initiative, that new, fresh inspiration and visions that can guide you to do better or to do more. So everyone may have something different that they want to bring in the meditation, or if you don't have a particular uh, matter that you're concerned about right now, you could also just be open to what Allah might be wanting to grant you or to lead you. He might inspire you with something. Maybe you have time at your hands. You don't know what to do with it. And maybe Allah will guide you a certain direction to make use of that time. Uh, but before we do the practice, like I give a couple of examples and I explained what the main names uh, means. Any question or comment about that? If you do have a question or comment, just raise your hand. Okay. So let us start the practice. Just close your eyes and take a deep breath. Another deep breath. One more time. Bring the question to your consciousness, whatever you want to ask about. And let us invoke the name and be receptive to any feeling, any sensation, any vision, or any inspiration or insights that you may receive. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya Allah Ya Muqaddim Ya Muqaddim Ya Muqaddim 
يا مقدم 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 يا الله يا مقدم course because we have a certain time we can't go longer with the practice but this is something you can do at home and you can pick the rhythm and the tone that you want to your heart feel like doing you follow your heart with it and do it in an audible sound you can put the alarm clock on five minutes or ten minutes and you can do the practice and then you write, what do you receive from it? And the muqaddim and the muakhir, which is the one who delays, they actually, those names are together, you know? They are not opposites, but the, because Allah is not a duality, he's not a multiplicity, Allah is one. He's not 99 names, Allah is one. So all of his names work in perfect harmony. So the one who advances and the one who delays, they both together prioritize what is necessary to delay, what is necessary to do and to advance and both advancing and delaying has their wise role to play in our lives we too need to know when to advance and when to hold back when we be ahead of our time when we hold back and when to delay or what we call procrastination sometimes has its value in certain situations. I read a beautiful book called The Originals, who looks and studies the people who were successful in their work and what qualities or characteristics that distinguish them. And there is a chapter about procrastination and procrastination is not uh, a negligence. If you hold the project or the initiative that you want to do within you to simmer inside of you 
and to really look at it from all direction and to, of course, if you're a person of faith, you pray about it and you think of possibilities and of better ways to do this, better way to do this, even if you're writing a paper, an assignment paper, if you are a student, you also hold it within for a while. You don't rush to write right away unless you get a download of inspirations, right? You need to take your time with everything. We live in a life that is fast paced now. We eat while looking at things. We do everything. We don't give it its appropriate time. And Prophet Muhammad والسلام, taught us to give everything its appropriate time. So he said, give your self time for self-care, give your family, your spouse, your family, appropriate quality time, give your body its rights and its time to rest, and give Allah and your spiritual work, your, your inner work, your time with Allah, its appropriate time. So that is what... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to learn the wisdom of when to hold back. Sometimes it is good to hold back if you're angry, for example, rather than being reactive and impulsive and saying things that might hurt the hearts of others. It will be good to delay your response a little bit if you can. So there are times when Delaying is required is even the wisest and the best action to take. So that is part of our learning. And some of the examples that I took from the Holy Quran about that, about the wisdom of delaying for a gradual and gentle healing and affecting a change. Like a change happens through time. Like, for example, uh, we all uh, were embryos in our mother's womb, womb for about nine months, right? Why it didn't happen so quickly? Because gradually change is gentle, is more merciful and compassionate and is, is wise. So sometimes the small steps are all that we need to take, small little steps for a change to occur. And if you ask for a change to happen all of a sudden, it really sometimes causes conflicts and cause uh, chaos. And of course we learn from that too. But if we learn the wisdom of delaying, just as we learn the wisdom of when to advance something, this is a great wisdom. And wisdom is the greatest thing or the greatest portion, as the Quran says, that one can attain. And it requires some inner work, some reflection, some remembrance of Allah and connecting to Allah who is the all-wise. So here the examples from the Quran is uh, when the prophet came, there was the habit of drinking, getting drunk in the streets and doing things that are harmful to others. So he didn't come and right away say, change that. Of course, the revelation came to gradually prepare people to be able to do that in their own time and in their own pace after changing them from within first. So, because healing comes from within first. So first, Allah talks about how intoxicating drinks can be harmful than beneficial. And then later, I don't remember the period of time, but later another uh, verse or ayah was revealed to the prophet that tells people to not to, to come drunk to prayer, at least, so that you can recognize what you're saying. So again, it was like a gentle, gradual uh, change, because if you're praying five times, 
then you better to cut and to be observant of not to get drunk at the time of the prayer. Then eventually when people were ready and they changed it from within, then the ayah came that says, avoid, better avoid altogether intoxicating drinks because it forms habits and sometimes you don't know how, when to stop and you can get in trouble. So better to avoid it. There is other healthy things to do. So again, that was a gentle delay. It was a wise delay to affect that social change. So social change, whether we want to get rid of racism or uh, any illness in the society, divorce rate is high, this and that, we need to take steps to prepare people and it all starts from within. So that is one way. Another uh, example actually also from the time of Prophet Muhammad والسلام, there were slavery all over the world uh, from India to China to Europe to Middle East slavery were everywhere was everywhere so it came gradually also not like let us do war and end this once and for all no it came gently so first, it established rights to slave. You have to feed them from what you feed. You treat them well. You clo you give them enough clothing, housing, and, and don't uh, strike them or abuse them and so forth. Then another ayat uh, came to encourage freeing a slave as a way of expiation of sins. If you free a slave because you did a great mistake, you will be forgiven. So that was one way to, to encourage freeing a slave. And then the Quran also provided a pathway to freedom through making a contract because the slaves were labor at the time. And if they were freed all together, all at once, they will be homeless and jobless and the owners will lose labor. So it, it came to encourage making a contract. I can do this work for you, and after I finish this work, I can be a free man, or a free woman, and that's a contract that they sign, the owner and the slave. And through that, many slaves were freed as well in a gradual way, so they can prepare what, what I would do where I would live after I'm a free man or woman. And at the same time, the owner will also know how to hire other employees, for example. And then Islam, of course, encouraged the elimination of racial and ethnic barriers and calling for equality, it called for equality and made rules for wars because back then the war captives were sometimes enslaved. So the Quran came to put rules to end that and also to protect the children and women and those who are vulnerable. So women cannot anymore be uh, enslaved or uh, used uh, as prostitutes and so forth. So it happened gradually. It was a big social change. And you can see there are steps to be taken to change it uh, because most of the time we don't like sudden change as human nature. We don't like uh, revolutionary change. Sometimes revolutions happen, but then there is usually setbacks and conflict between the old and the new. So Allah through his name, the one who delays and the one who advances try to bring the balance between meeting people where they are and gradually changing bad habits or unhealthy habits to better habits and traditions and rules and so forth. So we need to also look at our lives, uh, what the changes we need to do in, first, you bring things to awareness and try to express it, express your feelings about it. Then 
next the smallest steps that needed to be taken we take in its appropriate time so one way to look also at the al muqaddim and al muakhir the one who advances and the one who delays is priorities setting your priorities right so sometimes we don't set our priorities right sometimes we turn to extremes we become workaholic and again isn't our relationship with our loved ones should be more priority of course at times if you're facing work problem or starting a new business yes you might give a little bit more time to that because it becomes the priority to be able to support the family and so forth but at other times you need to return to the balance so we need to set priority what to advance in our life and what to delay and if we reflect on these qualities in our lives, our priorities, what we need to advance, what can be delayed. Are we trying to push something and it's not happening? And so Allah is asking us to take a breath and hold back. And again, there are times when we need to hold back because if we're angry and act impulsive, we need to hold back. If we're having a, a bad habit and we follow our impulse, we need to hold back. We need to delay following that impulse even for a little bit until the habit fades away and you replace it with a new habit. So whether in the individual life or in the social context, changes happen step after step. And we need to prioritize what is important and how to achieve it. So let us now also do a practice with invoking the name al muakhir So again, you can just sit back and relax and take a deep breath. One more deep breath. One more. Yeah, Allah. يا مؤخر يا مؤخر يا مؤخر يا مؤخر يا مؤخر يا
the sound of the Arabic letters, they have meanings and effects. And if you pronounce the name in a way that you embody the vibration and the quality, you need to demonstrate that. Like when you invoke the name Al-Mu'akhir, you try to slow down if you're invoking the name and muqaddim feel the sounds and feel how they are giving that strength and that push forward and this is like an art and a science but if you connect it deeply with your heart you will be able to follow it Follow what your heart is telling you how to invoke the name. Then you will be able to receive, inshallah. Anyone would like to ask a question or they received anything they want to share? Feel free to raise your hand. So we have 10 minutes. If there is no question, I can actually talk about another name. But here, Ruh raised her hand. Assalamu alaikum, Ruh. Assalamu alaikum to you, Amani. Uh, I'd like to know if we can work with uh, multiple um, qualities at the same time mm -hmm. or not. Or does it make sense to stay with one for a number of days and then move on to the next one? Can you be explain more on that thank you yeah well some people uh, do invoke a name every day for reflection and contemplation and focus on it during the day some some people stay one week with the name to reflect and to invoke it certain times of the day and you can do multiple names, of course. You can do the 99 names. You can do two names, Al-Muqaddam and Al-Muakhir, together to, help, to ask Allah to help you prioritize what to advance and what to delay in your life. So you can do that. That is allowed. And the third way is to follow your heart. If you need that I am so rushing, I'm so rushing in everything I do. So maybe it is time to invoke the name al muakhir to help you take a breath, you know, and slow down a little bit. If you feel like you've been lethargic and not being active and, you know, maybe you need to invoke the name al muqaddim if the, you, you, there is things that requires that you do and you're not doing. So 
it depends really on the situation, but you can do multiple names together, yes. And I think someone also asked any tips on how to follow your heart. As I said, like, what are you going through in your life? And uh, if you know the qualities and understand their meaning, you can invoke by one quality, or you can invoke just the name Allah and see if he will lead you to invoke other qualities afterwards. You will just feel it coming to you, to your mind, to your consciousness, and you follow that. And as you recite the name, if you go deep with the with the sound, you will sound you will feel. I need to slow it. I need to say it fast. I need to chant it in a particular way. You follow that. So I hope that answer your question. Any other questions? If not, I can touch on two other names, which are Al-Baqi, the everlasting, walking in the light of our path, of Al-Baqi, the everlasting, teaches us the art of leaving godly permanent effects on each other on the world. So for example, when someone give you a flower, the flower itself, even though it's blooming and beautiful, sooner or later it will wither. Even if you keep it in a book or try to preserve it, sooner or later it will wither, right? Because the forms, the physical forms are always perishable. But the meaning of the giving of the flower for example, someone is giving you a flower to express their love or their appreciation or congratulations for such and such a success that you achieve. So these flowers shows empathy at times. It may show compassion at times and empathy. It might show I share in your joy or I love you or I appreciate you. Thank you. So these meanings comes from the qualities of Allah, and that is what remain. So the, the flower itself weather, but the meaning and the quality, the effect on you, you will carry in your memories. You can retrieve it. Nobody can take it away from you. It is not destructible. The way it made you feel and affected your life, it is not destructible. So these are aspects of al-Baqi. Al-Baqi is all the divine qualities and the meaning they invoke in us, these are what is permanent and everlasting. So al-Baqi teaches us about impact and consequences. For example, the ayat in the Quran says that the good word is like a good tree, that it's, uh, it is rooted in the ground, but its branches reaches heaven and it will continue to produce good fruits. And the bad word, the offensive word, is like a bad tree that has no stability on earth and no, it will wither, you know, it will die. So when I say a word, it, it leaves an impact on you. It reaches your ear, it transforms the chemicals in your body, it sends signals to your brain, and then it leaves a memory, a memory that could be uplifting, inspiring, beautiful, uh, uh, giving you knowledge, inspiration, anything like good. Or it can be a painful word, so it you continue to evoke that pain in you whenever you remember it. But that pain is curable. That's why it doesn't need to exist. You don't need to hold on it. 
but the good things are permanent. The good meanings, the good impacts are permanent because they are from the name Al-Baqi. All the divine qualities are permanent and the, the meaning they evoke in us are permanent. So that is what we need to focus on. Uh, yes, al -Baqi. And then uh, we don't have the time to practice al -Baqi. and al -Warith. al -Warith means the inheritor. To walk in the light of al means to learn the art of receiving and passing knowledge and wisdom and leaving a legacy behind just as you received from the wisdom and knowledge of past generation, you inherited knowledge from all wise people and your ancestors and your families and your the people you came across, the prophets and messengers. When you're leaving this world, you also need to leave a legacy, a charity that keep helping people or knowledge that keep feeding the hearts of people or uh, good actions, good memories that people inherit about you. So that's alwaris. Alwaris is both receiving and passing knowledge, wisdom, and good uh, impacts, similar to al baqi a little bit with a slight difference. That al baqi is that individual, you know. Uh, action that leaves an everlasting impact while awareness is a collective of things that you inherit the collective knowledge or the collective heritage from your culture the collective wisdom from the religious people or the spiritual guides you came across so it's more of a collective and then you leave also uh, something to pass to the generations that comes after you. So al waris teaches us, us about heritage and legacy. Allah says in the Quran, is it not guidance for those who inherit the land after its inhabitants that if we willed, we could strike them for their sins and seal up their hearts so that they would not hear? So this ayah tells us to be aware that we're here temporary to inherit and to live inheritance right and to filter what we inherit from our culture for example because every culture has misconceptions biases prejudices against other cultures we need to filter that and each culture passes beautiful wisdom, beautiful knowledge, beautiful characteristics. So we need to honor that and filter the other things that we don't need to take and heal our uh, generational wound and the trauma in order to continue to pass the good heritage to the next generation and next generation and that serves society and nations and the humanity as a whole. That's al Waris teaches us about that. Um, I'm going to stop because we ran out of time, right? Six o'clock. And to see if you have any last urgent question. <laughs> yes, al Waris and al -Baqi. Alhamdulillah. And Manny, maybe you can take a few minutes and talk about what we'll be doing uh, the weekend when you're in Minnesota. So we will follow the same steps by uh, talking about the name, how we can ob observe it in nature, how we can understand the meaning of the name, and how can we uh, see examples of the prophets, how they were representatives and servants of these names, in inspirational story, stories, and then how to relate to the name and become the servant of the names and the representative of these names in your life. So I will also prepare handouts for people uh, that has more details. And we will do some practices as well 
of course we will not do the 99 names because I don't think time will allow, but we will go through some of the names as much as time allow, inshallah. So beloved, Amani will be in uh, Minnesota uh, October 19th and 20th, 2024. Um, so for those of you that are in the area, uh, you're welcome to come to Sufi Center to attend. And for those of you who aren't, it will be live streamed on Zoom. Uh, the link for information is in the chat and it's also in the show notes that are below this video. So we encourage you all to come. Uh, there is a suggested donation, but um, as always, uh, Sufi Center Minnesota turns no one away for a uh, lack of resources. So if your heart calls you to come, come. And uh, Naama has a question. Uh, go ahead, Naama, please. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Amani. Um, I'm, alhamdulillah. I'm coming from out of state, inshallah, um, to the retreat in Minnesota. And I was just wondering if there are any um, books you recommend that I bring? Well, of course. Uh... There is, you know, Fawzia's book is, is always good to recommend. I think there is a lot of books, the name and the names. Uh, not necessarily we will read from books, but those books can be in a reference for you. If you want to, you know, after we finish the day, read more about the names, that's up to you. But it is not a necessity that you bring any book with you to the retreat, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, thank you. Thank you, Naoma. So thank you, Amani, for a beautiful teaching. And we look forward to um, a, a beautiful extended teaching in uh, a couple of weeks when you're in uh, Minnesota, inshallah. So inshallah. we appreciate you very much. I saw Rahma raised her hand. Rahima, sorry. Rahima. Yes, I was just going to add that our Sufi Center Minnesota has some book books for sale. And so if there are books you don't have at all, you might be able to get them from us. So that possibility exists. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank Thanks, you very Rahima. much. Thank you, Rahima. Thank you, Amani. We will stop the recording.